Hi, my name is Dylan Goss. I'm the writer of Mara. You can find us on the web at mara-comic.com. If you like what we do, support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash stuff rock. And you are on Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to Rapid Fire. The concept of Rapid Fire is simple. 11 questions, 9 to 15 minutes for the interview itself, and we get to talk with creative and talented people in the entertainment industry. So who is our first guest today? We are joined today on this rapid fire interview by a returning guest. He was on earlier this year talking about his amazing comic Mara by the ever talented Dylan Goss. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. So for those that don't know anything about you, tell us who you are and what your project is all about. Uh, my name is Dylan Goss. I am the writer of Mara. And I also created the studio, the Stuff Rock Studio. That was my idea. And I brought this little team together so we could make comics. This is our first one. Well, it's good having you back on because this time around, because we hinted at it last time at the last interview, uh, you have a Kickstarter campaign, finally, about yeah. your comics. Yeah. So tell us how that's going with yourself. It's going great. We funded in the first 24 hours, oh, wow. got a project we love badge. We're at about 200% now, a little over 200% now. The great thing about kit campaigns like that are, you know, the fact that you get 100% funded and then you have now stretch goals. <laughs> Those are usually the, the hardest to think up as well as maintain. But, but how's that going for you? Well, we've unlocked two of the funding stretch goals already. Um, you got an extra model for a model. I get into miniature painting a lot. You know, there are hand painted minis on the campaign as well. I promised the uh, five hand painted Maras. I got to do that now. Well, that's going to, are you going to like videotape it and record it? I didn't think about doing that, but I might try that. And we got issue two for all backers as a PDF. And then we also have a, a number of backers stretch goals. We got additional comic creators to put their projects up. That's even more comics. Hey, it's more bang for their buck initially. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to love that. But but how did you come up with the, the actual stretch goals? Because I, I've always struggled thinking up cool concepts and ideas with that. Oh, it, it, wasn't, a, it wasn't a quick system. It was me going, ah, uh, what do I want to do for 3000 What? Well, yeah, it was, I was very much laboring over it, I guess I should say. <laughs> <laughs> so then since we've last talked, uh, obviously uh, creating a campaign like this is, is an interesting endeavor. And it's great to finally see that this is a fully funded campaign at that too. In terms of putting this campaign together, especially being your, your first campaign, what, what planning and process did you go through in order to, to make this become realized? First thing uh, I guess I should say we did was find out what the minimum cost would be to actually make this happen, make it come to print. It's a lot easier to convince people to buy into a campaign that has funded, right? So you want to put the smallest cost you possibly can on there while still allowing a project to happen, of course. The, uh, we talked to printers. There were actually three different printers we were looking at, and we settled on this one. We got their quotes, and I'll be honest with you, it was a little bit like pulling teeth. They did not want to give up the quote. We finally got their information. And they were good printers. They just don't have the best customer service. So we were willing to accept their terrible service because they were a good printer. Once we finally have all the costs nailed down and also for the extras, like we're doing uh, postcards and stickers and a keychain, we also needed those costs. And adding all those up and the packaging, we were able to come to a, a figure that we could... Uh, set the campaign to. I think that was the first important step in setting up a campaign. Do you want to mention who the printer is? 
It is a printer actually in Taiwan. It is a Ch Chunbua. They are in uh, Chinchu area. There are actually a lot of manufacturers and printers in the Chinchu area. Yeah, I'm I'm not familiar with the, with the printers these days, especially when it comes to comics. But I'm glad you glad you found one that was able to meet your needs. That's the that's the best part about all of this, too. Yeah, they are. Uh, they're generally good at their jobs, just not at the part where they talk to us, and that's all right. You, you can't be good at everything. <laughs> Then and looking at your your team, obviously, it, it, we'd be remiss if we didn't re mention who your team is uh, when it comes to this particular comic. So, uh, who helped put together this campaign, and who did you speak with that that kind of gave you advice in order to to make this as easy as possible for your first campaign? Uh, I've been working with Inked Marketing to uh, put together the campaign, and. They handle a lot more than just the social media blast. They helped with the tiers. They actually created the video we have as well. They reviewed the campaign because they've done this a lot more than I have. So putting together the campaign was something that I needed help with. You know, no one on our team had done this before either. Rosie, our illustrator, uh, this was all new to her. I think the only person on our team team who had done this before is actually our Portuguese translator, Rogério Rios, also worked on Healter, but he also worked with Ink Marketing. When I talked to him about it, he said, yes, I, I very much recommend them to help you put together a campaign. That's who we ended up going with, and I was pretty happy with everything they did. You know, they, unlike the printer, they are on point with communication, and they're teaching me how to do this as, as I go along as well. Any any tips that you picked up that uh, you maybe didn't realize uh, during this entire process so far? Uh, originally, I didn't think about this, but you need to have more graphics. However many graphics you think you need, you need to have more graphics because it's a lot better than using tech, even to describe your tiers. You know, people want to see what they get in each tier. Some comic. Kickstarters are really, really bad about that. I've definitely gone through some and not understood what I was getting by the time I get to the reward. And I think that's something that you want to be upfront about. Yes, your, your background and your creative process, these are all interesting things to your backers and your readers, but they need to know what they're getting when they are backing your project. The other thing is that there are a lot more mobile users than you probably think. Oh yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. <laughs> so, so you have to focus more on on the actual vertical side of, of right. things and making sure things aren't too large or whatever. To yeah, okay. By the way, when does the campaign end? I have to ask that. The campaign ends on the 29th. Once this is all completed, and and once you start fulfilling everything uh, that you are funded for uh, what's what's the next step for you not only creatively but maybe from a business standpoint well we're still creating issue two right now that's just going to be ongoing mara is a series that has a defined beginning and end and we are going to finish it unless something happens the something that would happen would be you know, an extinction level event because we're all pretty we're all pretty dedicated to this. Once this campaign ends and we deal with fulfillment, of course, the next one won't launch until this one is fulfilled. And I think that's an important point that I've seen a lot of creators not fulfill before creating their next Kickstarter. And while that might be useful from a business standpoint, it often doesn't look good from the consumer standpoint. I've definitely felt that way about campaigns I've backed. I see someone's launching a new one and I still haven't received mm. what I backed originally. And it makes me not want to participate in the next one. Obviously, other people are going to feel differently, but I'm not going to do something that I feel is disrespectful to the consumer. If I already feel as though I've been disrespected by this practice and then I go 
I turn around and do the same thing. Well, that's pretty much the definition of immoral, isn't it? Also, it's hor- it's not very good business either because you're taking good faith and goodwill that that they've supported you once that they'll support you again for granted. Because this is a short interview, <laughs> there, there's not a lot we can truly go in depth into. But when it comes to the stories that are coming up in issue two, you know, are you excited about issue two? And now that you kind of had your campaign already wrapped up pretty much when it comes to the funding side of things? Yeah, yeah. Uh, issue two, I mean, we, we are finishing page 40 uh, this weekend. It's a bigger issue than the first one. That part I'm excited about. The first one was as long as it needed to be. The second one needed to be longer. Uh, originally, I was thinking we would split it up into issues two to four due to the length. You know, we talked about that behind the scenes, and we thought it was better to finish telling this part of the story before moving on to the next issue instead of just having shorter ones that were cliffhangers or split up in ways that didn't quite make sense. We're telling more story this time, and uh, I'm excited about that. We get to include more elements. Of course, there are new characters, there are new enemies. And they all have to not necessarily be totally resolved, but there has to be some amount of resolution before we can move on to issue three. I don't feel like we're dragging it out. I feel like this is, you know, as long as it needs to be, it's just that this one needs to be bigger. We get to give you more comic this time. That's my thing. I'm happy about making comics, so I'm happy to give people more comics. That 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 makes me happier. I don't think we'll turn down more comics whatsoever, especially when it comes to your stories here, for sure. But we thank you for making this a little longer, especially keeping us entertained as as you have, for sure. That being said, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course. Uh, where can we find the Kickstarter campaign as well, too? Uh, I am most active on Twitter at Stuffed Rock, one word. You can find the uh, the web version of the comic at mara-comic.com. And the Kickstarter, I have a link shortener that's easy to remember, ink.pub slash mara. Well, Dylan, thanks so much for coming on the show. I do greatly appreciate it. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. Of course, I'm actually updating the website now after a couple of years. So I thank you for your patience in that matter. And of course, on our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated, which is youtube.com forward slash tgtmedia. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening, watching on Two Geeks Talking.